Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question, evaluate division. All right. So in this question, we're given equations in the format a divided by B, which equals to K where A and B are variables represented as strings and K is going to be a real number. Given some queries, return the answer. And if the answer does not exist, return negative one. Okay, so the input is always valid. You may assume that evaluating the queries will result in no division by zero and there's no contradiction. So one thing we want to note over here is that there's some sort of relationship which there is. So for example, when you're doing A divided by B, there's a relationship which gives us a value of K. And another thing you want to notice is that there's a strict conditions over here, which is the fact that the queries will not result in division by zero and there is not going to be any contradiction. So using that, we can kind of assume that this question is going to be a graph question. So for example, let's look at this first example over here. So I just drew out the first same example over here. So a comma B and B comma C. And what this basically means is that a divided by B is equal to 2.0. So a by B is equal to 2.0. Now, one more thing we can deduce out of this is the fact that if a by B is equal to 2.0, we can take the reciprocal of that. So all the reciprocal uh, reciprocal is, is the numerator becomes the denominator and denominator becomes the numerator. So a by B equals to 2.0. And we also have one more thing, which is B by A is equal to one by 2.0. So we have both of these conditions that we can account for. Similarly for B by C equals to 3.0. We can also say that C by B is equal to one by three. So we have those two conditions that we also can account for. So over here, we're going to draw a quick graph. So over here, we're going to have a node with the value A, then we have B, and then we have C. So now A divided by B is going to give us a value of two. Now, one more thing that we noticed is earlier, we saw A by B and B by A both have completely different values. And that tells us that this graph is directional. So the direction does matter. So A to B is not the same as B to A. So in this case, a to b, so a divided by b is equal to 2. But b divided by a is going to be equal to 1 by 2 or 0 0.5. Similarly, over here, b divided by c is equal to 3. But c divided by b is equal to 1 by 3. So this over here is our little graph that we have. But now the question is, how exactly can we use this in order to get an answer? So I'm pretty sure you understand how can we get the answer to a divided by b B divided by A, B by C, or C by B, right? All of them, we kind of went through that. Now, the question is, how do we get the answer of A divided by C? So this is what we want the answer to. So currently, we have a value of A by B, and we also have the value for B by C. And we also have the values for the reciprocals of each of these. And the value that we're looking for is A by C. Now, if you multiply these two values, A by B, multiplied by b by c, the b and b get canceled out, and this equates to nothing but a by c. And that is exactly what we're going to do. We want to get from a to c. So to do that, we first go from a to b, and that over here has a value of 2. So we're going to get that over here. And in other words, this 2 just represents the value of a by b. Similarly, we go from b to c, and that again just represents the value of b by c. And what is this b by c equal to? It equals to 3. So over here, we're going to multiply these two numbers, giving us a value of 6. And this value of 6 is going to be the value of a by c. And real quickly, let's just uh, double check it over here. So we made a query of a by c. That's the first query we made. And as you can see over here, the first query a by c is equal to 6. So we did get that correctly. And real quickly, one more example, let's say a by e. And when you have a by e, where is e? e does not exist at all in our graph. So in that case, we're going to end up returning negative 1 as we did over here. Okay, so hopefully you understand how this works. And now what we're going to do is we're going to code it out. It might be a little bit confusing. And while coding this out, we have two different approaches. We can take a depth for a search approach or a breadth for a search approach. I don't think any of them has anything better or an advantage over the other one, but they just work slightly differently. So for this question, we'll be taking a depth first search approach. All right. So over here, we're going to be having two different steps. So our first step is going to be to build the graph. And in our second step, we're going to be going through each of our queries 
and we're going to perform a depth first search in order to come out with the answer for that specific query. Okay, so let's start off with the first step, which is building our graph. So over here, we're going to have a variable called graph, which is going to store our graph. And in order to get that, we're going to be using the default dictionary from collections. So collections.defaultdict, and then we're going to be using a dictionary. The reason we're using the default dictionary from collections instead of the inbuilt dictionary of Python is because for default dictionary, so let's say you try to access some value which does not exist, then in that case, it's just going to assign it a random value and it's not going to throw out an error. Okay, so uh, now that we have this, we're going to add stuff to our graph over here. So to do that, we're going to be iterating through our equations and our values for that. So to do that, we can use the zip function. So for our values, we're going to be getting x and y, uh, just two arbitrary values, and each of them are going to be strings. And the other thing that we're going to be getting is going to be the value of it called val. Okay, so for this, in zip, and we're going to be getting the equations, and we're also going to be getting the values. Okay, so now that we have this inside over here, we're going to be defining our values. So we're going to go to graph, and then we're going to go to x, and then y, and that is going to be equal to our current value. And we also need to do the inverse of this. So like we saw earlier, so graph x, y, that basically says x divided by y equals to this value. And in other words, uh, what this is doing is where we have a key x, which points to y, in simple words. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite. So y pointing to x. And in this case, the value is going to be the reciprocal. So 1 by val. And I'm just going to do 1.0. And the reason I'm doing 1.0 is that that way we're going to get a floating point value since that's what we want. So now that we have this, we're done with the first step, which is creating our uh, graph. So before we go on to building our DFS function, over here we're going to define our results list, which is just going to be an empty list. And to this, we're going to add all of our results. So now what I'm going to do is we have the queries over here. So let's go through each of these queries. So to do that, let's just do for query and queries. Okay, so now that we have each of our queries, we're going to be adding the value of these queries to our results value over here. So res.append. And over here, we're going to be calling our DFS function. So DFS. And what are we going to be calling it on? So over here, we want to give the query. And we're going to give the zero index of it. And we're going to give the first index of it. So the zeroth index is going to be the first value. So this, let's say this is x and this is y. So it's going to be x divided by y. And over here, we're also going to give it a set. And this set over here is going to be used to track um, the values that we've already visited. The purpose of this will be really evident once we're creating our DFS function. And that should be it for our queries. And at the ending of this, we're just going to end up returning our results error. Finally, over here, we're going to finally build out our DFS function. So this is the last thing we need to do. And over here, we're going to give it a x value, a y value. So that's going to be x divided by y. And we're also going to be giving it a set called visited. Sorry, visited. I can't spell. Okay, there. So visited. So what visited is going to be used for, it's going to be telling our DFS function what nodes did we already visit. So if we already visited a node, there's no point of visiting it another time. So in that case, uh, that's what we're going to be using our set for. And the reason we're using a set and not a list is because a set has faster lookup times. So yeah. Okay. So over here in our uh, function, we have three different conditions that we can look for. So our first condition is going to be if our x value is not in our graph or our y value is not in our graph. So when if neither of these are not in our graph, and in that case, that means that we're never going to get an answer. So in order to uh, take care of that condition, we can just directly return negative 1. Uh, and more specifically, I'll be returning negative 1.0 since we they want us to return a floating point value. Okay, so that's going to be it for our first condition. And now our second condition is going to be if we actually have a direct connection. So what I mean by that is let's say we have A to B. So there's a direct connection from that, right? A divided by B does exist. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our graph. And we're going to iterate through the X uh, values. So that is going to give us all of the nodes that it connects to. So in order to check if Y is one of those nodes that X points to, then in that case, we can just directly return that value. So if, sorry, if Y 
in graph x, then in that case, we can just directly return its value. And its value over here is going to be graph x and then y. And that is going to give us our value. And finally, we have our third condition. So our third condition here is going to be for the fact that we did not have any of these met over here. And more specifically, this third condition is for when we have some sort of this, uh, division, but they're not joined to each other uh, directly, right? So for example, when we're doing A divided by C over here, A and C are not directly joined. We go to A to B and then B to C, and then we multiply those two values. So that's what we want to do. And to do that, before we actually do that, I just want to show you how our graph looks like so you can kind of understand how we can possibly do this. Okay, so yeah, it's obviously going to be wrong, but uh, this is how our graph looks like. So over here, we have the node A, and A points to B. So that's what it's showing us. Similarly, B points to A and C, and C on the points to B. Okay, so using this, we want to get a value of A divided by C. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to have a over here and we're going to iterate through all of the values inside of a in other words everything a is pointing to could possibly lead us to c and we're going to check each and every one of those until we get to c so over here there's luckily there's only one value but there could be more values so we're going to be putting it in a for loop and we're going to go through each of those nodes so over here we have b and now what we're going to do is we're going to call the dfs function but this time we're going to be calling it on b and c so we're basically going to find the value of b divided by c so now what's going to happen is we're going to check if b exists and b does exist as a key and uh, luckily for us c also exists as one of the keys so we're just going to end up returning the value 3 and we're going to multiply that with our current node which has a value of 2. Now in this case, this is pretty simple. We only have two of them, but what if we had more of these nodes that we want to travel to? So in that case, what's going to happen, let's say in B as well, let's say this C does not exist. Uh, so what we're, what's going to happen here is we're going to call this function one more time with whatever values are over here. And one more thing that you want to notice is that in order to avoid us going and visiting the same node several times, that's why we're using our visited set in order to see which nodes we have already visited. Okay, so let's just do that over here. Um, so finally, we're going to be iterating through all of the values for i in graph x. So that gives us all of the values, uh, or instead all of the nodes that graph x is pointing to. Okay, so now that we have this, we're going to check if that is inside of our visited list. So if i not in visited, then in that case, we're going to go ahead and do these steps. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're first going to go to our visited set. So visit it and we're going to add this current i value just so that we don't go and visit it another time. So visit it dot add i. Okay, and now over here we're going to have a temporary variable which is just going to store the value currently of our DFS function which we're going to call on this new node. So let's call the DFS function. We're going to be calling it i comma y. And this y over here is what we get from over here. So we're basically doing i divided by y right now. We want to give it one more value, which is the visited set that we have over here. So we're going to give that as well. So visit it. Okay, so that's what we end up having over here. Now, over here, we're, we're going to have two conditions. So we might not end up having or finding any value. So in that case, our temporary value is going to be negative 1. So when our temporary value is going to be negative 1, then in that case, we're just going to continue. So what that means is we're going to go back over here to our for loop and we're going to look at the next possibilities or the next possible options. But if this is not the case, so else uh, this is not the case, then what we're going to do over there, that means that we have some sort of value in our temporary list. And like we did earlier, we multiplied those two values with each other. So we're going to do that. So re uh, return. So we're going to go to graph x since this is what we're on and we're going to go to that current i and we're going to this is going to give us that current value and over here we're going to multiply this with our temporary variable over there and that is going to be it and one more condition that we want to do over here is at the very ending if we did not get anything that means that we do not have any answer and we're going to end up returning negative one and that should be it and one more thing you want to notice is each time we start off with a fresh set uh, for each of our queries and uh, each time we're going to be adding that to our results. So that should be it. So let's submit our solution over here. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. 
So finally, thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you.